Ladies and gentlemen, we, people of color, daughters and sons of immigrants, we belong to Europe. I am, we are the story of Europe. Hello everybody and welcome to this new episode of We Belong, the podcast that gives a voice to the new daughters of Europe. I'm Yasmina Wiran and I am your host. And today I bring you to Luxembourg to meet um, Corinne Semedo Furtado, which is a professional dancer, the CEO of Heels Confidence, uh, the first black woman to become Miss Luxembourg, but also a social worker in a psychiatry. So welcome, uh, uh, Corinne. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It means a lot to me to be on this podcast. <laughs> Thank you so much. Corinne, you have so many hearts, different uh, stories and backgrounds and experiences. Uh, we will unpack them mm. in a bit, but I would like to start by asking you to share one word uh, that best describes you um, and that describes your work. What is it? So to me, uh, it's two words, but it's one. I would say uh, a beautiful paradox um, because sometimes people think, okay, if you do this, then you cannot do that or you just say this, then you cannot say that. But that's just something, you know, it depends on what your mindset is. For example, some people, uh, I am a social worker, right? But I am also a dancer. And I have colleagues already at work who already told me, yeah, for me, it's really difficult to understand how you can be a social worker and then we watch you on your social media and then you are this dancer and then you are this funny girl and then I'm this serious girl. I would say that I have a lot of me and yeah, I will start with an advice right away. You that people can be more than just one thing and everybody can be a beautiful paradox. That's why I didn't want to say paradox. That's why I added beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much. I mean, uh, you totally uh, prove it that you can have different interests and it's not because you're a dancer. Then, you know, there is this stigma also around people in arts and people um, working um, in modeling that they might be superficial. Yeah. You precisely show that there is more than just, you know, the appearance and the beauty, but there is also the inner beauty, isn't it? And oh, being, yeah good within yourself and feeling good within yourself that's it because now that you say that I have um, someone at my workplace um, as a social worker who told me you know for me it's very difficult like very difficult like when I watch you on your social media I would never say that you are that person. Um, I was like, what do you mean? It's like, yeah, on your social media, you post all these beautiful pictures. You post the way you dance. You post your life. And then when I talk to you, you are like such a deep person, very understanding and blah, blah, blah. And then I ask him, but do you read my caption when I post stuff on Instagram? Do you huh? listen to what I say when I post a story? And he was like, no. I was like, okay, so that means that is the is the is the ba the boundary that he set himself. It's just a reflection of what he thinks. Like it's not because uh he doesn't feel comfortable doing what I'm doing that is not possible. And lately that's one of the lessons I've been learning that people they project on you their own insecurities. Exactly, absolutely. And by, you know, being yourself, but also doing what you love, you prove that um, it's possible to, you know, just follow your passions. By the way, you start in dancing very young. You were 13 years old. Mm -hmm. And yeah, tell us more about it. How did it start? So basically, um, before dancing, when I was seven, I started with uh, artistic gymnastic. <laughs> and um, when I was 13, <laughs> I had a boyfriend. 
uh, he was living in France. And back then, we didn't have those um, phone... Um, um, you know, where you can call in Europe and it's for free and blah, blah, blah. Back then, you know, when we, when you were on the phone, the internet didn't work, you know, like old school. So I had this boyfriend in France and there was no free rooming like yes, now no. that we enjoy in the European Union, right? Yes. But I, I, my mind, I was already in the future. So I was like, I was calling him every night, every night. I would stay like hours with him on the phone. So one day the bill arrived and my mom was like so upset and she was like, from now on, the gymnastic is over for you. I was like, no, you cannot do that to me. Well, I mean, it was my mom and what what could I say? <laughs> so I had to stop. And um, my sister, my older sister, shout out to her, Nelia, because she is my big inspiration. She was already dancing, so as I was not doing anything of my life anymore, <laughs> um, I went with her um, to her rehearsal, and I was sitting there and watching them, and suddenly the teacher asked me, do you want to join? And I was like, what? Me? Why? And yeah, I joined and that's how I started my first dance lesson. We had a little dance group. We would do competitions and so on. Um, and then when I was 15, um, I decided to do the audition to enter the Conservatory of Luxembourg in the dance section. And I, I was like pretty confident because, you know, for me it was like, oh, you know what? I, I can dance, it will be fine, blah, blah, blah. So the audition went very well. They put me straight uh, into the third uh, year of dance. And, um, and then when the first week started, I was like, I wanted to stop because I was like, oh my God, I was so comfortable, confident because I never did ballet. Uh, and then you arrive at the conservatory where everybody's like, oh, I've been dancing since I, I'm one month old and you are there struggling with the exercises and so on and so on. But yeah, with the hard work, I pushed through and I made it and I graduated. And uh, yeah, and today I am at a good place that honestly... Great. I would not imagine back there because the lack of confidence was very big. But oh, yeah. What do you say that helped you to find this confidence? Mm, good question. So I think first you have to dare to look really like into yourself and you have to be ready to face what you need to face. It means to, for example, for there are a lot of people on depression, like myself, I have been uh, three years, I had a depression and I was taking meds and I was doing therapy. And um, was it related to the pressure that you had in, at the conservatory, like the competition that exists? So um, my depression really started because... I have always had this pressure, um, you know, in my family, my brother and my sister, they would not always behave. And I, from my mom, I was the little one, you know, so I wanted, I always wanted to be the kid, you know, that doesn't make their parents worried. So for me, it was like, okay. I have to be the kid with the good grades, uh, with, you know, who does it all, who has it all. So for me, I was always looking forward to be good at school, be good at dancing, um, do my Miss Luxembourg. And I had to be this beautiful girl. And I was this strong girl. And everybody, I would give good advices. So everybody would come to me, you know, and... I think that I have shown too much that I was strong. So, you know, so when I was feeling down, I would think that I would let myself down if I just say that I'm feeling down, you know. So for me, I have created that 
that facade a little bit that you know I am strong I will be fine and all this this situation and past traumas led me at some point where was I was like I cannot do it anymore and I had to face it all you know I was it's like when you come into in front of a wall and if you don't want to listen to your intuition and to your feelings one day life will force you to do so you know Exactly. Yeah, you were pretending, but I would say you were lying to yourself because you wanted to um, be that perfect little girl for your family, for your parents, yeah. and, and achieve much. But uh, maybe you put too much pressure on your shoulders. That's it. And I think it is important at times, especially those times, right? Those COVID, uh, you know, pandemic times, to tell ourselves it's going to be fine. Um, not every day we're gonna be successful. There is some days where we're gonna be down, and then we're gonna just, you know, get up again and stand up yeah. and push harder. But it's okay to uh, have low moments, right? Yeah, and what is important is also because for me, I would say to myself, oh, I will be fine. But the thing is not just saying that you're going to be fine. The thing is that also when you feel sad or when you feel ing anger, because what I have realized is we only want, I'm saying we, but, but I can only talk about my experience, but most of us, we only want the good feelings. We only want the joy. We only want the love. We only want the party. And whenever the, those negatives, but they are not negative, but I'm saying because that's how people label it. Whenever like fear comes or sadness or when you feel lost, we don't want to see that. We just push push it away. But the thing is, for you to get over it or let things go, you have also to face those emotions. I, I like to say in my classes, um, you have to sit down at a table with all your emotions. You know, because even fear or even anger or even sadness... They are there to help you. They are there to show you that something is not okay. You know, and we had to get yeah. to know those feelings. So when they come back, we know how to deal with them, you know? Exactly, to process them all. Oh, um, take it off. Yeah. <laughs> you were mentioning the classes that, that, you, that you are giving. We will come back to this because it's very very important the work that you're carrying before that I would really love to know how as a black woman you grew up in Luxembourg and decided to become the first um, black woman to you know compete in Miss Luxembourg mm -hmm. uh, in such a you know um, high level competition very prestigious and also I would love you maybe to unpack um, the expectations that you had back then participating in this competition and what you actually uh, learned while taking part in this. Ooh, okay, that's a long story. So let me find <laughs> a good way to unpack it. So I would say growing up as a black woman in Luxembourg for me was not very hard I would say because I always felt accepted wherever I went um, for me I have never um, witnessed like really an attack like me being a black woman I mean yeah as a kid sometimes kids they would come to me they'd be like oh you look like poop or you look like chocolate but you know I never left it to get to me to this point where it gets to me and also I, I felt it was easy for me because Luxembourg is a very multicultural country country and mm -hmm. you see a lot of ethnicity nationalities uh, and so on so and also the black community is like very big here you know so I had people you know to look up to but now reflecting now that I'm older and that I'm, that I'm wiser, you know, people think that racism is just people not letting you in because you are black or people that are just telling you, oh, you're black. But 
that's not it for me like i i have always grown up with people telling me um oh you're so beautiful for black woman you know and i would take that as a compliment can you imagine like <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah that's exactly you know the the, the forms of uh, microaggression and and racism that we f- we face every day as as brown and black people but um the fact that you normalized it i think that was it. also the problem yeah. i have an interesting campaign by the way at we belong where we explain why things like these are not a compliment but are actually racist comments so i invite our followers to check them out yo yeah, no we i will send me that link later <laughs> we'll tell them <laughs> it's on our social media <laughs> yeah because you know or they would tell me oh but you know you are not like them and then at some point i have i was thinking what does that even mean you are not like them or you don't look Uh, you look beautiful as a black woman. That o- just shows how much lack of knowing our history of the black people people have. Because first of all, saying that you are beautiful for black girl because, you know, my features, I don't have like a super big nose or a super big mouth. But what people don't know that like Africa has so much ethnicity. You can find from the darkest person to the lightest person to the people who has like uh, um, black eyes to the people who has green eyes to albinos to blonde people. So in Africa is so much variety that people don't don't know, you know. And for me, before even that, I would say I was also in that I was like mentally enslaved because I would be like Oh, you know, but it's not that easy. Look, if only black people would behave, blah, blah, you know. And now thinking of that, I was like, girl, you were so like, your mind, I was brainwashed, you know. And um, doing Miss Luxembourg, being the first black woman to like ever win a, like a title of Miss Luxembourg, you know, for me, it was like a very proud moment because... I didn't have, now that I think, someone who would look like me that had this title. So even for me, imagine the day of the final, um, when the judges came up the, the stage to, ta- to like congratulate us, everybody would come. And everybody would come to me with the same comment. They would be like, oh my God, you were such a sunshine. You rocked that stage. Uh, you know, they were really talking to me like I win, you know, I won, but I was like, huh? And then I couldn't believe it. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then my co- but I was so happy to me, you know, I was like, you know what? I'm happy that I, that I, you know, that I got something out of it. And, um, and then my coach came up to me and he was like, oh, then this last judge came to me and she told me the same. And then she added, we really wanted to make you win but it is complicated and i was like what wow. is what does that mean <laughs> you know and then my coach uh who was black who is black came up to me and was like yeah you didn't win because you are black and if luxembourg would choose a black miss they would have lost a lot of sponsors you know you know Wow, it's even more shocking the fact that they tell you. Yeah, but you know, at that time, as crazy as it sounds, it didn't hit because for me, it's like, you know what? At least I got something. And that's the problem. And that's when I won, that's how they were treating me because I, I started to get a lot of um, projects. People would offer me uh, deals and projects and shootings, and um, they would never let me do it. They would never let me do it. I was their doll. And they they told me, yeah, uh, you know, you can be happy that you are black and that you own a title. Yeah, like like, like we made you, made you a gift, like you didn't earn it. So they really made you feel like you uh, owe them something because they make you win. Exactly. You know, and for me, it was like, Okay, so let me, you know, let me shut up then because it's true not a, you don't see a lot of black people uh that have this status or this uh you know, so 
And I, I and that's when really um, my depression started to hit, you know, oh, wow. because okay. they were. Um, it was like now to, this experience of Miss Luxembourg was very harmful to me because they really treated me very bad. But well, now the committee has changed. I don't know them, but back then uh, they would treat me like like a piece of nothing. <laughs> you know, let's just say it like this. I understand, but you know, that's incredible to think that the most you know important title that you received also came with a lot of struggle, and people might not see it. So it is important also to weigh these. Um, you were mentioning something very. Uh, shocking, which is the fact that you said uh, that you were feeling like they were treating you like like a doll. Um, yeah. Is this common in this industry? Can you unpack this? I think many people could benefit from this. So it's very common and that's why I started to do competition because it really hit me because I've been to Japan and to Thailand to represent Luxembourg in uh, two big five Uh, pageants. So big five means that they're the, the biggest competition in the world. So I went to two of them and, you know, we are there 90, 90, 95, or I don't remember countries who are competing. And, you know, you are there, you wake up at six in the morning to do your hair, to do your makeup. So by then it's already eight, then you have to go down. So as soon as you leave your room, You have to wear this mask on your face because there are cameras. You have to smile every, all the time. When you eat, they tell you how you have to eat. Then they say, okay, now I'm going to stop the camera. So now when you eat this, can you make like, mm, wow, this is so, you know? And I was seeing girls in private, how they would act. And then as soon as the camera were there, they would be like someone else. You know, because we, we had to, we are not, we were not able to completely be who we are, you know, and I'm a huge preacher of authenticity. And unfortunately, in that industry, you cannot be authentic, you know? Yeah, it's, you feel fake. You feel that everything you do is just the image that you portray. And as you say, you felt depressed because maybe you were you know showing something that wasn't your real truth or your real face and is at that point that you decided to uh, focus on mental health I know that you also started a, a, an organization called Heals Confidence which is two interesting words right yes Heals, <laughs> healing but also finding confidence something that you were looking for yes So you said it. So basically why I call it heals confidence, it's because in heals, you can like healing is in it, right? And for me, it's to let people know that the more confidence you have, the more healing you can do because, and also confidence, you write it confi and dance. But for me, I did the, the game with the words because, you know, true dancing You know, when you want to dance your heart out, you you have to have confidence, you know. And I have I have witnessed that the more confident that I had, the more I was able to to dance at my best. And, um, you know, also people You know, they see on social media all those perfect dancers, all, all these perfect models, and nobody or not a lot of people shows the behind the scene. You know, and what I, from my experience, what really made me grow and the people that I look up to are people who don't just talk about their success. What inspires me is to know where do you come from? Because that's how you inspire people. Because if you come with that perfect image, people cannot relate because perfect doesn't exist, you know? And everybody at some point has to go through something to get there, you know? And it's to show people, and that's why I, I, I don't mind sharing my story, is to show people, look where I come from, 
And look where where I am now. So I can only talk about my experience, but I know if it worked for me, it can work for somebody else. You know? Absolutely. You want to show your vulnerable side and the most human side of uh, who is Corinne. Yeah, that's me. And being vulnerable, it's so important. Like, if you ever come to my class, <laughs> you have to be ready to be vulnerable because that's w what all my class is about. Like, you know, and I think that's why my class has the success that it has. Because, you know, I, I, I make people go really look deep into their self because dancing is not just what you see from the outside. You know, if you cannot deliver yourself from the inside, don't expect your outside to cover it up because it's one day it will, it will fade. And at the end, you know, even if you are the most beautiful woman on the world, beauty fades. But the beauty of your inside, you know, it stays forever. You know, so and your mental health, if you are mentally not good, you can be at the best place. Because for me, it was that people were seeing me from the outside. I was good at school. I was good at dancing. I was doing all this missing. You know, I, I, I had my boyfriend back then where we were along together. You know, everybody would be like, oh, Corinne, but you have you have this perfect life. You travel a lot. But deep down, I was so sad. I was so lost and you know you can be at paradise people someone could come with one million euros it would not make me happy because i was not happy with myself you know yeah you that's not what you were looking for you were looking for something or, or an inner peace uh where you could you know be good with yourself and is this also the reason why you decided to become a social worker um i would really be curious to understand more what this brought you as experience so you know that's an interesting question <laughs> because when i did social worker i just It's just something that interested me because one day a girl came uh, when I was in high school, she came uh, to talk about the jobs and she was talking about this job. And it really interested me because, she, you know, I, from a very young age, sorry, I like to help people. I like to talk to people. I always love to listen to people. So, you know, my the reason behind was in the beginning not because I was not aware what I what my own reality was, you know. But now when I'm thinking back, I didn't choose this job for nothing because today is a job that is so fulfilling, you know, and seeing people grow and especially in psychiatry, I mean, working in a psychiatry has helped me also so much because You know, the, these are people who have been through, like, a lot of, like, traumas. And, you know, they still manage. Can you imagine when we are sad or when we feel upset or we, we are angry or something happens to our car, we are immediately like, oh, my God, my life is going to end. But these people, some of them have visual or hearing hallucination all the time. And they still manage to get up every day and to do their thing. And, you know, just walking around the house or just going to drink a coffee. They are happy, you know. And I really admire them because to me, they are the strong ones, you know, because they don't give up on themselves. And, you know, also it's very rewarding because, you know, since that I felt... Because those people, they really feel the energy of other people, you know. And I felt with my energy, a lot of patients where my colleagues, they'd be like, oh, he's so difficult. But with me, they would be so calm and they'd be like, Corinne, thank you. Oh, you are so real. You are, you know, and I started to believe that I was. You know, I started to feel because I would hear it all the time. Oh, you are so this and you are so that. But they really gave me, they really helped me out to really see who I really am and what with my own life experience, what I can bring to others, you know? So yeah, being able to do what I do the best, you know, as a living is, 
is amazing and I'm so blessed because I know a lot of people don't have that chance, you know, so... It's very, very important for you to recognize it and to be grateful and especially I think from what I hear, when you meet uh, through your social work um, experience, when you meet people um, in the psychiatry, you realize how lucky we are, but also how strong they are. And maybe we can inspire ourselves from their stories. Um, but thank you so much for sharing this. You're welcome. <laughs> let's, let's conclude, Corinne. I would really like you to give one piece of advice for any young woman uh, or black young woman that is listening to us and that as you has so many uh, ambitions and would love to achieve something but maybe she never saw anyone before looking like her what would you tell her so for me it's important also as a black woman that especially my community, I am pro-black, but pro-black doesn't mean anti-anything, right? Uh, but, you know, as my community, we are not so much res represented and also people who has like high status. I want people to look up at me, especially my community, and see someone like them, have a role model and look at me and be like, Well, I can do it too. And that's why I, I wanted to keep it always real because I want people, you know, to be like, wow, she's so real and yet she's so successful. And uh, I want to tell people to, you have to understand that that comes with experience, but whatever you set your mind to do, your mind can do it. If you want to, you can do everything you want to do. Don't let anyone tell you different because for me if back then I would have listened to the people especially in dance I would never be where I am today and if your dream is to become I don't know the next movie star or the next writer the next president or the next whatever just just go for it because now recently yesterday I had this I had this confirmation again There was this job that has been canceled, a big job, big dance job. And I was like, for me, it was like, you know what? I'm not going to stress about it because if this job is for me, it's going to come. So yesterday, you know, they called me back and they were like, are you still interested in this? I was like, yes. Yeah. So I have realized that whatever it's meant for you can never be taken away from you. And if that is your destiny, just go and do it. Find your purpose and just dare. Because who dares wins and don't listen to other people because, you know, sometimes we tend to listen to people and then we end up doing nothing because we are scared. You know, and I promise, even if you are scared, at the end of the day, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Absolutely. It is gonna be fine. Thank you so much, Corinne. It was such a pleasure to have you with us. And good luck with your work. Thank you very much for having me. And thank you for promoting mental health and uh all the the community issues you are addressing from Europe to it's it's very important and more people should be i hope that you know we get to a a generation where this will be normalized you know talking about those things i hope to it sees so important it's such a taboo still but it's so important anyway thank you so much for the work that you do thank you so much To conclude, let me share with you my key for today. As we spoke a lot about mental health in this episode, it is important to check out on ourselves, but also on our um, surroundings and the people that we love. Um, if you are struggling or if you feel a bit down or a bit lonely in this time of a pandemic, um, um, it is important to... Uh, ask for help and I would love to share with you some free support that you can find online um, on the website freepsychotherapynetwork.com. This was the end of our episode. If you like it, share it and we are on all social media. Bye!